Welcome back to Virtualize Everything. So today we're going to be talking about network configuration here at Roxbox 8. I'm going ahead and added a USB Ethernet adapter as well as extra Ethernet port. As we've mentioned before, this is virtualized for basically a demo for you guys, and it just makes it easier for me to host it this way rather than tearing down a system. So here you can see the configuration. I have two network ports here, one of them that's passing through, which is labeled net zero, and then another one that's labeled net one, which was just added. And here is the USB device that I added as well. So that's what you're looking at here. I click here on shell, we could get some information here and we can enter LSB to see that we have a TP-Link Ethernet adapter here connected via USB. So now what do you do with these adapters now they have? Well, you configure them. So let's start by looking at configuring ENS19 here and creating a bridge with it. Pretty simple to do. We can just click create here and we can go up to bridge. We can give it an IP address, but we don't have to give it an IP address. The only information the bridge needs is a port. So, so we can enter ENS9 here, or even the wacky name for the USB, or ENS18. Now, if you want this particular port to work on a single particular VLAN here, we just put a period, and then we can put a VLAN. So if I wanted to work on VLAN 10, and for some reason, I would just put a period in that. Now, only one port on your system can have a gateway IP address. Any bridge or port that has an IP address assigned to it is accessible via the web interface. So if I was to enter an IP address here, save this, as long as I was on VLAN 10, I could actually log in to this particular web interface, assuming that we haven't blocked firewalls. And we'll be coming up on firewalls shortly on this getting started with Proxmox 8. If you want to set up a bridge or something on Proxmox and you want to use it for VLANs or whatnot, you don't want anybody to be able to access your Proxmox system on it. Don't assign an IP address. VLAN aware, we can make this bridge. So if we assign this to straight ENS19 and we check VLAN aware, that would make it so any VLAN information coming in here, sort of like a managed switch, was paid attention to. And then we could actually assign VLANs to our particular containers or whatnot. I like to do this basically based on a bridge and not that way. So the way I'll do it is I'll put a period and I'll put VLAN and then I'll say something like, VLAN 10 or I'll label out a portion of my network or whatnot and then you can hit create. Now once you've hit create all you need to do is press apply configuration and yes and it's going to go ahead. Notice ENS19 is turned to active now and we now have a new bridge that we can assign. Now if I jump back here to the system that's actually hosting and we go to the network configurations here you can see where I've done this. Now, the old way of doing this was to actually sign, assign a VLAN to a port, sort of like I've done here. And then once that VLAN is created, you assign it to a bridge. And you can see where I've done this for VMBR 4 and 2. But you can also see where I did the period, which I've been doing now later on. And these comments here in the section, you can see that I've designated where in my house or what part of my house or houses actually here, this particular goes to. So now you could do the same exact process here with this USB one, but if you noticed it has a pretty wacky name. So what I'll normally do first with a USB drive is press edit, and then in that edit screen, we can actually highlight the entire name and copy it. Now note that if I didn't want to assign this particular port out to the rest of the internet, I could actually fill in information here and I can click auto start and I could give it an IP address, whatever I wanted, but I also need to give it the CIDR notation, which for my network is 
slash 24, and then I can hit OK. It turns to active, or it adds the IP address. Active hasn't changed yet, but I need to apply that configuration. Applying that configuration here will make that port active, and I could actually communicate it on, with it on this IP address. Now, this IP address doesn't really connect to anything here on my network. I'm not like wired to my switch or anything, so I can't demonstrate that here, but you can work with it just the same. You also have an option to do what's called a Linux bond, and here you have a couple of different configurations. Usually, I choose balance, but you can also choose backup, and there's a few other different configurations you can choose here. I would highly suggest, if you're doing this, checking the Proxmox documentation for the differences between each of these. I've done balancing. Balancing works pretty good, but then we can actually add two ports in here, which would both get switched, and that's how you would communicate there over your network. We could also do Linux VLAN, and Linux VLAN basically has been taken over by this period. I like the shortcut a lot better. So then you can also choose from these OSVs. OSV stands for Open vSwitch, and I believe, and I haven't checked in Proxmox 8, Open vSwitch needs to be installed on your system. That's not a complex problem, and it gives you just a more manageable interface for managing how behavior works inside your system. As a beginner, I would suggest staying away from Open vSwitch, but as you get more curious about Proxmox and get more comfortable with it, it's a great thing to check out, and it allows you to manage your network in a little bit more fine detail. Myself, I use managed switches, and I find a little need for it, but that may not be the case for you. So go ahead and check that out as you get more comfortable with Proxmox, but I'm going to stay out of it for now. So with that, I hope we've been able to show you how to get started with Proxmox networking and at least familiarize you so you can start to configure your network schemes, either by bonding multiple ports together so that you can have failover or you can load balance so you can have more traffic coming into your server, uh, especially with something like an R710 or something you have multiple one gig ports and you may want more traffic than that depending on how your network set up. You will have to correctly also configure your switch for, to get the full advantage of that. Uh, and every network switch is different so I'm not going to like log into mine and show you how to do it because just the way I do it on mine doesn't mean it's going to be the way you do it on yours if you have a grant. So with that I'm going to conclude this particular video on Proxmox networking. If you'd want to see a particular part more, go ahead and drop a comment. Uh, I really intended this video to be a beginner's guide, getting started Proxmox after all, and allowing the user to be able to get up and running for the first time and start to really experience what Proxmox is. It's a great tool for learning. As always, have a good night and please like, share, subscribe.